Behold, the BenQ screen bar. See, BenQ emailed me, and BenQ said, hey, we have a screen bar. Would you, Zeos Pantera, like to review it? I'm like, all right, I guess. And look, it's $100 on Amazon, so that's a pretty expensive light. So I'm like, all right, let's take a look. And it's, 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 I'll give you the real quick quick rundown, the lowdown on this thing. So uh, it's got this spring-loaded heavy nut with rubber and silicone and rubber and a little thing. And in here is a special uh, reflective panel and there's dual LEDs and you hook it onto your monitor with just weight and friction and that's it and it'll hook on any monitor touch button on you get to adjust brightness you could hold it to go up you can hold it to go down let's hold it to go up again you can tap it to go brighter and, and dimmer you can hold to change color temperature there's all the way blue there's all the way warm so you get cool and warm LEDs that will vary and you could press individually to find the perfect color temperature you want every time you press the thing and it loops down and up and down and up and same with the brightness a little bit dimmer uh, you can put it in automatic mode which has a sensor here so if my lights are on full it makes it bright because you need it bright but if my lights go off it'll dim the light because you don't need it and the benefit of this light is I used to have a I'm gonna have like desk lights here excuse the tape hanging down and that's when I do reviews and these big fucking lights and it's like oh god and this light specifically designed to not hit the screen you can see like my hand and then it gets dimmer there so it lights up my desk to here and not my screen so I could actually look my keyboard my Zeo's keyboard perfectly lit and that and if you want to shut off you, you can't shut off auto by hitting auto again you have to shut off auto by hitting the brightness adjust and then you can just swing your finger over to night to shut it off and it's off it really is I was looking for something like that and it just so happened that BenQ emailed me and I'm like hey you're BenQ and I have a hundred thousand subscribers what else you got and they're like well we have these two monitors and I'm like oh sh yes so episode sponsored by BenQ hopefully I get into their projectors because I really it's getting to the edge of me needing a projector and I'm like oh I like the a see I'm an AV guy audio video and I could do the audio all day, um, just testing the Atom A uh, T7Vs here. And it's like, oh, ha, 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 ha. So I may as well throw some video into that audio adjustment. So let me get the paper because I've got two, repeated two monitors that BenQ has done, done thrown at me. And I've adjusted the brightness and contrast on both screens to work the best on the camera. So it's a little dark for me in real life, but the camera seems to come out really good. What are these called? What kind of, what BenQ is that? That's the curved 35 inch, the EX3501R. And this is a 32 inch 4K known as the EW3270U. And I'm going to start off by complaining. Um, why the fuck are they called that? If you ask someone what monitor they got, they'll tell you, oh, I got the Predator. Because that's the monitor everyone gets. It's the 144 hertz. I th is it by Asus? I, whoever it is, it doesn't matter. You know why? It's called the Predator. And everyone knows what it is because it's called the Predator. No one brags about their uh, EX3501R because it's... Give it a name, BenQ. I'm, I'm, I'm helping you out here. I, I will fix your marketing. Everyone knows BenQ. Everyone likes BenQ, but there's no... Give me the name. You have to name these things. Call this the, the face tear or something. Some terrible no marketing name. Just give me a name. Because no one's, you got the 3501. Even the 3501 would work. But then you got to put an R in it. And, okay. I, could, I should cross that off. Names, not numbers. So, this is a 35 inch curved. And it's got a slight curve. It's not a great curve. It's a slight curve. And that's all you really need is a slight curve. And I've never used, like, for a long period of time, a curved monitor before. And I'm starting to understand. 
it took a while. Like if I open up here, it was weird having things actually face me because I never really ran a dual monitor setup. I always just kept getting bigger and bigger monitors as proven by the 40 inch 4K that's behind there. That's the one I actually use. And I understand now that when I put that one back on and this one goes, my friend has already offered to take it from me. This will not end up in a yard sale, unfortunately. First of all, the box this curved screen came in was the size of a small refrigerator. That one, the 4K, the 32 inch 4K, came in a box about that big, about that thick. This came in a box about uh, that big plus a foot and that thick because it comes with a base stand and it had the curve, it has to sit. So when you ship one of these, expect the biggest box you've ever seen. When you ship one of those, I could have kept it in the box, honestly. Getting off topic. So this is a 1440. It's 3440 by 1440. So it's not quite as wide as a 4K. That still has the resolution by a long ways. Sorry to keep up YouTube and Amazon page up. I'm gonna start going through my list because I don't do monitors a lot. And when I talk about them, it gets a little uh, hairy or shaved. I don't know how you want to talk about it. So, all right, we've discussed the names. We don't like the names, right? Agreed? We're gonna call that one the wide one, and we're gonna call that one the 4K, just to keep it simple. Links in the description for everything. We'll talk about the curved one first, or we should save the curved one. Because here's, here's, the, here's, the, here's it. I'm, I'm selling this one to my friend, and I'm keeping that one to go to lands, because that one is just small enough and flat enough, and I'm, I'm obsessed with 4K, all right? I have ultra-wide fetishes. I have an ultra-wide vertical there. You, if you buy a special adapter, this does not come with a VESA. I'll pull it out at some point. It has a vertically adjusting base, which as you can see, is still up on foam blocks. So these are the three inch foam blocks. So I still had to put foam blocks down because even at its maximum height, it was too low. So imagine three inches lower than this was as high as it went. And that was just like, my eyes are here and it should be eye level with her eyes. My eyes are her eyes or eye level. So then once you put it up, then you can go and adjust it all the way to there, which I think is nice. It's nice to have some vertical adjustment. That does not have any vertical adjustment at all. In fact, that stand just basically tilts. So this will tilt pretty generously and then rise so worth his price tag mm, just for that maybe all right we're talking about you curved 1440p 100 hertz not 144 uh there are some people out there who are just gonna go oh man not 144 why well, i'm even watching this review um because 100 hertz is still a fucking lot for a 35 inch 1440p uh 21 by 9 that one's a 16 by 9 again that one's 4k this one's not 4k and I, I could tell you from being a wind, I want to minimize that, from being a Windows user. Because here's the thing, I game, sure, but I do a lot of publishing and editing and reading comments and emails and dealing with things. Well, Zeos, isn't the ultra wide more productive? Not really. Not really at all. Because here's the deal. Um, I'm cloning the two monitors. They're both running off of my NVIDIA uh, 1080, GTX 1080, and these are free sync monitors, so I can't even take advantage since that's an AMD tech, but what you see here and what you see here are clones. So do you see all these black, see that black bar? You gain that when you run 16 by nine on a big monitor. So it's like, I'd rather have this be usable than ultra wide. If you're watching movies all day long, I mean, shit, my projection screen. I have a 104 inch ultra wide project projection screen. Cinema scope, if you wanna be real pedantic about it. And I love it for watching movies, for watching media, it's great. But if I'm doing production work, um, the ultra wide at this resolution isn't really helping me. Mm. Because it's 400 pixels narrower than a 4K, and it's 1440 height instead of 2160. That is a big chunk, big chunk of uh, nah. 
So now I'm cloning it, so now I'm not able to use the whole thing. So let's look at this one first, and then I'm going to disable this one and make that one the primary. So 100 hertz, and I am running it at 100 hertz. And we, what should we talk about? What, what do you want to talk about? Go through the list. So this will do picture in picture. My old NEC will do picture in picture. It's a nice option if you have a game console. Or you, actually, you could hook up a cable box legitimately to it and watch TV. And you can either do side by side or just pop the um, picture in picture right there and adjust the size of it. I wrote as a bullet point, no front HDR button. And that doesn't make any sense to you until you see that one, which right over here has not only a front HDR button, which turns on HDR, which makes it blow up on the camera, but it also has a brightness and intelligent color mode, which that does not. That will do brightness. It has this screen, this little lens here on both that will adjust the brightness for the room ambience, just like the BenQ screen, light, screen bar will. But that one will do color temperature as well, and this one will not. So this is like the higher end monitor, but it has a couple quirks that the 4K is still beating it on. No, for amateur adjustments. And that sort of goes for both. Because here's the thing. I'm an audiophile. I like audio, and I like to tweak audio. I like to get just right. And I'm a video file. So when I got these monitors, the first thing I did was hit this button, then hit this button, and then go, mm, okay, I gotta go to picture adjustment. Advanced picture, blue light, super resolution, video mode display. Where's, where is my, um, like I could adjust brightness, contrast, sharpness, gamma, color temperature, and then AMA, which is advanced motion acceleration, which is for gaming, which will basically overdrive the, uh, the panel so that you get much less motion blur. So it's like a one millisecond response time. But I wanted to fix the colors. Because here's the colors are pretty good. They're pretty good. I'll say this, they're pretty good by default. But I wanted to really anally tweak them. I like tweaking things in an anal fashion. Giggity. <coughs> so brightness and contrast and sharpness. I'm weirded out by sharpness on digital displays. Because it should be one-to-one -one pixel accuracy. And it should have no need for sharpness. But it has to stay on 5 out of 10, because if you put it up to 10, you exaggerate every edge and it's terrible looking. You put it down to 0, and everything's blurry, even though it's pixel accurate. So sharpness exists, you got to leave it on. Here's what I'm talking about when I say amateur adjustments. Uh, gamma, 1 through 5. Not 2.0, 2.1, 2.2, which is the standard 2.2. It's 1 through 5. Gamma. And that's a little, like... I mean, I, yeah, I can just swing through them. I can go and I can change the gamma and you can see that it gets higher or lower contrast levels. But that's not, like, I wish there was a button that made it like, all right, I'm not a three-year-old. Give me real gamma names. Give me real gamma spe specs. Color temperature, normal. Bluish, reddish, user defined. Bluish and reddish, are you serious? Like, uh, uh, and then when you go to user define, you literally get RGB. And then they're all at 100. And here's the weird part. So the color temperature is set to normal. But if I set it to user define, even though those are all at zero, 100, which is the same, normal and if I go down and I go to user define, they are completely different. So I go to normal, then I go to bluish, it's very blue. Then I go to reddish and it's very red. Then I go to user to find and it's sort of like. I don't understand. What's normal then? If bluish is blue and reddish is red and user to find seems to be dead straight RGB 100, why is normal different? I actually was just leaving it on user to find at 100. So um, if I could turn on either, either, either one of my either Vizio 4Ks. Or this is a Samsung 4K, and they're only 60 hertz, and they're just televisions. Neither one of the ones I use in this room by default are computer monitors or gaming monitors. They're 60 hertz locked, they're, 40, they're 4Ks, they're, they were cheap. This one was like 350, that one was like 300 on sale, and I'm happy with them. And it's not until I sat down in front of a real monitor that I realized a couple things. Number one, I really, really miss a remote control to adjust things. 
Like I thought I would hate having to have a remote control to turn the, turn the monitor on and off and adjust things, but I can go menu down. I could sit back in my chair. I could put my goddamn fucking feet up and I could adjust my monitor. Whereas on a computer monitor, which I haven't had in a long time, I'm sitting here fiddling, fucking with these fucking buttons under here. And there's, there's how many of them power? Then input, then this, this, this. There's like fucking seven buttons under here that are way further back than they need to be so that I'm looking for like my finger. It's like, no, no, no. Oh, there it is. That's like second knuckle back. So if I could give an advice to just all the people who make high-end monitors, and this one's fucking $900. Include a remote control. You don't need, you know, the, the, the channels and actually you could use volume. There's speakers built into this. They're garbage. I'm not even going to demo. There's speakers built into both of these. And playing sound out of them is an affront to the senses, so I'm not going to. It also sucks that it constantly takes over. Every time I reset a monitor, it's like, oh, there's a new audio device and it'll then take over. And that's, that's neither here nor there. I, I want a remote control so that I could sit here and my GDM FW900, which I have one in that room, uh, a rebranded silicon graphics because i told you i'm a video file and anyone who knows anything about video knows that a, a sony trinitron gdm fw 900 is the best that there ever was ever will be and ever could be in crts well i have a silicon graphics one on there and even that had a little pull down and an up down left right arrow and this gives me these bullshit arrows and i'm just going to complain because that's what i need to do so I miss having a remote. It would be beneficial to give me a monitor with a remote just just, just for adjustment purposes, just to change the volume and to turn it on and, on and off is easy. At least I just reach under here, there's a big fat button. Although on this curved screen, it's all the way on the left. And on that 4K, it's all the way on the right. Eh, probably different places designing these monitors. Okay, amateur adjustments. Yeah, on either one, like I was saying seven minutes ago before I got enough of a rant, if I want to adjust the colors on that Samsung or on that Vizio, the options are in the millions. And I'm not joking. I could take every 10% grayscale and adjust not just RGB, but, but cyan, magenta, and what, yellow? I could do, and those are up and down 50 points. I can adjust insane amounts of color corrections just fuck off offset gain i got it all makes my gdm fw 900 look like it's a pussy monitor that samsung and that vizio and i will sit here and tweak with color patterns i don't have a calibrator if i did though i'd be like mm, just ugh. so amateur adjustments on both of them they don't go nearly enough into depth. And I can shut that off now while we're talking about the monitor. I kind of want to see though. So let's dim this. This is all about, this is actually a review for the screen bar. I shouldn't even put the monitors in the, um, nice, perfectly dim. Um, color temperature user equals normal adjustable stand. We talked about up, down, tilt, up and down is nice. My NEC, my vertical one that I use there, that stand, which is hidden, I bought that specific ultra wide because the stand not only adjusted, but adjusted high enough that I could rotate it 90 degrees. Now this being a 35 inch, not a 34, I measured it, it's legitimately a 35 inch screen. Running that vertical would be insane. And because it doesn't have vest mounts by default, there is an adapter you can buy that will convert the actual thing that's uh, holding onto the monitor to a vest mount. Um, I might be able to link it or I'm just not going to care because I don't think any of you running a curved monitor vertical. Well, that would look kind of cool, especially at 1440, that 1080 vertical, you get, you feel the resolution on the width. What's happening? Oh God. Oh God. Anyway, I should probably have closed that. Adjustable stand, no VESA built in. Uh, the Chrome stand. And I don't know if you could see this, but this stand down here. It is chrome, like shiny, like mirror, mirror shiny chrome. And I'm probably going to pull it out to show you the back of it and everything. But first we're going to talk about it. Because it's, um, I like the look of it. It's bezel-less, it's got just a little black around the actual LCD, and then this very small bezel. Then obviously the front face is fine. 
I really like the way this looks. It's very clean. Then it's got a silver vertical. Uh, hold on. Uh, is that as high as it goes? That is as high as it goes. It will go down though, just like your mom. Uh, so it's got silver here and then chrome. And I can't tell you how much I've tried to keep this clean, but every time anything, I, I reach in here to grab something and my finger touches it, it's chrome. It's shiny chrome and bad. So, I mean, aesthetically, I guess it works. I'm not gonna complain too much about it, but I just did. Uh, so that's all I have for bullet points on this. These are points that apply to both units. We'll talk about those when I get to them. Let's move over. So this has no vertical adjustment and it is a little low right now. Like where I'd want it to be, I'd want it to be up. When I had it on that desk, I had it up. When I have it on this desk, it's just temporary. I'm just gonna leave it down. But I usually like I don't know, a little, little more Middle of the screen should be like there, so it's gotta come up. So if you get one of these, eh, at least it has a vest amount, and it only weighs, actually here's the weird thing. So that one, 35 inch curved, weighs 21 pound, 21.28 pounds. This one, uh, 32 inch 4K, weighs 21.52, this is slightly heavier. It's like uh, two tenths of a pound heavier than that one which I find remarkable because that's a pretty heavy bastard and this one seems pretty light. Uh, I like this because um, I know I'm gonna use this for lands. I'm gonna take the vest mount that's back there and custom build a handle that comes over the top. And then I'm gonna slide this behind my couch when I'm not using it most of the year. And then, oh, it's time to go to a LAN. I don't have to disconnect any of my TVs. I'm gonna disconnect this. This baby comes out. We go to a LAN party, we rock it. I should, hold on. I'm going to enable just this display so I can keep the changes. Thank you. Oh god, my mouse is literally gone. Well, I should probably set the um Do I have another? I don't know what this is taking me. Oh, 4K done. Oh, sweet. Let's give you a nice 4K background. So, while that loads, because I don't know why, but my Windows thumbnails take literally eternity to load. You can tell me how why in the comments. I fewer points on this one because it's not super complicated. Let me think. What do we want to see? Oh, Sennheiser, the Love Live girls. Uh, something artistic. Boom. That's artsy, and we need to fit it. Great, I'll upload this later. Anyway, so now that we're done talking about the EX3501R, let's talk about the EW3270U. Again, they need fucking names. 4K, 16 by nine, this is more of a standard monitor, it's just big. And any, any time in my life bef before I moved to this apartment, a 32 inch 4K would have made me shit my pants. But I run a 40 inch 4K, that's a 43 inch 4K. And then I say I upgraded to a 40 inch 4K cause it's still, I wanna bring that pixel density down or up, pixel density up, size down. And this is a 32. And as you can see, if you can even see, I have it set to 100, I don't have it set to a, you know, a scaling. Because I want to use all that resolution, and you can just, it's like tablet sharp. I think 36 would be the ideal size. Honestly, 36 would be it. 40 is a little too big, but I'm going to use it. And 32, for I'm, a, I'm insistent, and you can argue in the comments, a 28-inch 4K is dumb. Because if you're, well, you got to scale everything up, and then what's, the pixel density is insane. I, I can't. I can't see the pixels from here. I'm the hand length away from my face and I can't make out pixels. So this is a 32. You drop this to 28, wh wh why? All you're doing is causing it to be harder to run video games on it or not be able to use it at one to one. I like using things at one to one. So now that we are actually here, I can run this properly. Oh, oh look how much space. Wanna see, look, 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 look in the space, ah! Oh. Go to 
Chris website. I, I, oh, I don't want to click on over here. Oh, nope, definitely not that one. But if I go to like Imgur, I mean, that's a waste of time and space. I, I could just run my browser in a floating window if it goes 4K. You understand how insane that is? So back to the size, 32. I wish it was 36. 32 is nice for storage and for transportation. 40 is too big to move. I like 40. So here, here's, here's the, let me, excuse me. Oh, by the way, oh, they both have USB-C. That's fine. 32 inch. Server. Let me get to this point before I forget it. So people are like, wow, don't you like playing games on that ultra wide? And I go, yeah, like, can't you see so much more because it's ultra wide? And then I laugh and they're like, why are you laughing? And I'm saying, cause you see that black box behind that 35? Yeah, that's a 40 inch 4K. And you notice how it's the exact same, well, this how the speakers are sitting here. And if I take that monitor off, I could take my 40 inch 4K and put it in the exact same space. And then you know what I get? I get the exact same width horizontal view and then like this much more screen. So going ultra wide is fine. If you have a if you have a monitor this big and you add ultra wide, wow. But I have a monitor this big and all the ultra wide is doing is cropping the top and bottom, so it feels a little more claustrophobic. But that's specifically me. If I could force people to buy big 4Ks, I'd do it. So a 32 inch 4K is very very cool to look at, simply because the if I go here and these are let's see do I have things that are not dirty, probably. If I open up anything that's like high res and I skip through it, on this sort of pixels per inch, it's it's like looking at a goddamn tablet. It's just like, oh, I just wanna touch it. I wanna feel, and I don't ask for these images, you'll never find them. I just wanna feel the colors, I, it's, it's absurd. This is way more a productivity monitor than a gaming monitor, however, However, you can game just fine on a 16 by nine, as long as it's big enough and you're close enough. And since I can sit here, which is seven inches from the screen and not see pixels, I can game from here. The benefit of the curved being that I the edges wouldn't like taper off and here they do. All right, specific things about this monitor. A fixed stand, which detaches super easy, I'm so, you know how hard it is to like reattach the monitor to the NEC or to that TV in the background? You gotta get a screwdriver out. This has like thumb screws that are spring loaded. So they just, they pop out and stay in the monitor. You put the stand up, you go whoop, and it's done. So that's great. For LANs, that's the key. It does have VESA mount points. It's got a 100 by 100 pattern on it. It doesn't weigh that much, so a standard arm should hold it. And I'm, I'm really interested once I'm done with this review, I'm gonna stand this bitch vertical like that, and I'm gonna lo load up FUBAR, and I wanna see what vertical, let's see, it would be 2160 by 3840. It's gonna be insane. A vertical 4K is the way to go, especially in a smaller form factor. Um, front HDR button. So like I was saying on that one, it has HDR, it has an HDR mode, these are HDR monitors, if I go into Windows, I can turn on HDR. I've actually gone back and forth a little bit with BenQ because when you put on HDR, this monitor turns blue. So Windows 10 does not interact with this monitor correctly, at least not through my 1080. It might be different on your cards. I was told it's just, it's luck of the draw because HDR is so new. And if I put on HDR mode, which makes it much brighter and it's probably blown out the camera, HDR is emulated. And then if I put on the brightness and color temperature adjustment, so it uses this screen down here. Look, it's got a little, little window. So it's showing me whatever the hell it's showing me. Shut that off. If I go, I will, I will show you if, if, if this comes across at all. If I put on HDR and WCG. Ugh. Now here's, okay, yeah, okay you're freezing out. Good. Did you see what's happened? Can we even, can we even? Do I have a white? Here you go, here's white. This is an email I'm sending. This is a pure white. It's 
blue gray and washed out and I'm like, all right, well, maybe I could adjust it. And the problem with going with the, um, by the way, remember how I said those buttons are way far back? These buttons are right there. So the other buttons are there and these buttons are here. I can't adjust brightness, contrast, blue level, nothing. Nothing is allowed. Once you're in HDR mode, like legit through Windows HDR, I can adjust sharpness. Picture mode uh, is just to pick if I want cinema HDR or regular HDR. So. Let's just do regular HDR, and it's it's still blue gray. It's blue gray. It's brighter, but it wants blue gray, and it's just no. See now HDR is just on. See now it's just fixed on, and you can't adjust it unless you load up a monitor calibration thing, which I don't have access to, to actually load a calibration file. This is like, you put night light on. No, 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 no. We're shutting that off. We're shutting that off. Thank you. Uh, uh. So now whites look actually white. Like that is white. That is fucking white. What do I have to set up here? Now I gotta go. And also here's the thing. You could assign these buttons. Like here, if I go back and just press a button. I have it set. These three buttons are settable. And I have it set to blue light, uh, brightness, and contrast. You can set it to anything you want. And uh, what I should have it set to right now is picture mode. On that one, it's set to picture mode. So I could just quickly go and jump there and then jump and, oh God, user mode. Oh, one of the bullet points here is picture mode's too many. So I'm on user right now, picture mode menu. I'm gonna go up. So I'm on user, that's the one I've set up and I've set it up real dim for the review because the camera will pick it up better. There's MBook, there's Eco, there's Rec 709, which is a color balanced one, which I would almost recommend trying because it's not terrible. Then there's sRGB, then there's Photo, then there's Game, then there's Low Blue Light, then there's Cinema HDR, then there's HDR, then there's Standard. And then we're back to User, which is the one that's going to probably look best in the camera. I don't know. We'll see. User. Standard HDR, Cinema HDR, Low Blue Light, Game, Photo, sRGB, Rec 709, Eco, MBook, and User. Okay. There's just, that's so many fucking options. Maybe you need them? What the hell is MBook? I didn't even look that one up. I've looked up everything on these, I was researching. I didn't even bother with MBook. What is MBook? MacBook? MacBook feeding into it? I don't understand. Both of these monitors have USB-C inputs, which is a thing that I didn't know was a thing, but I don't have a laptop new enough to, to use that. So it's nice that they're using USB-C to the fullest advantage. These are cracking of the edge of reality. Um, actually, this one says it's two custom keys. So the blue, when I touch this, and it says blue, that one stays, and I think the brightness and contrast I can adjust. That one has three adjustable buttons in the front. Uh, fix the investment, okay. Now we're moving on to the things that both screens have. No, wait. No, wait. Smart focus. So here's the thing. I would call the curved one the gaming monitor of the two. Like, if you had to say which one of these you think is designed specifically for gaming, it's that one. Yet this one has a very interesting feature. It's called smart focus. And we're going to get to it through a very long series of button presses. And up. Now, can you see what's happening here? You see the whole screen is lit, but now just this box is lit, and now just this smaller box is lit. And you can, I'm gonna put the larger, I'll put the smaller one on, okay. Then you could adjust the horizontal position, the vertical position, and the scaling of it, so we can make it even smaller, or even larger. Larger and larger and larger and larger. And, what I believe this is for is for when you're playing games the hardest of the hardcore. When, when you play the hardest of the hardcore game. What can I look at that's not a game but is a game? Or I can just load a game, I guess. Half-Life 2. When is Half-Life 3 coming out? Let's see. Planet Side was, easy, was running, so it should load fast. So now that I've got gray, like literally a shade around the outside of this. 
smart focus. It's, you understand what it's for? It's, it's to take your giant screen that you just spent all this money on and to literally gray out the outside of it so that you could focus just in the center. Just in the center. It's a, it has to be a gaming thing. I can't think of any other reason you'd have this in Windows. You're not browsing the web with just the center and focus. It's, it's a gaming thing. HDR should be also a gaming thing or photo editing thing. But, so that doesn't have smart focus, but this does. All right, let's just, and the speakers over there are playing, which is gonna blow my mind because these boot carts are not set up to play through that computer. They're set up on the PS Audio Sprout through my actual review computer because I did this review last and it's just, things are happening. So here, look. And you know what? Here's the weird thing. It kind of works. Tilt this up for free for you people. Gone. Team killers. It kind of works. Like, cause you need side information. That's the whole point of having the, the ultra wide is you want to know things that are happening around you. But you really, I have perfect 2020 vision. Let me, let me, not to brag. I hate that. People think, oh, you got perfect. No, I got perfect 2020 vision. And, and sometimes I can't find things in my room because I see everything. All this shit and detail is just happening all the time in my face. And I'm like, I can't find that. I literally can't see it because there's so much going on. There's just so much visual in for fucking mation. So the fact that this does this and will sort of dull the visual information around, I kind of like that idea. I mean, if I bought a monitor that was just that big, this would be ridiculous, right? That's like a 10 inch monitor. No one's gonna play the game and they're gonna crop the field of view to that sort of thing. I mean, I would, because I'm a lunatic. But it really does simplify what I'm looking at. And I wish this was a more, I wish I was, hold on, I could hit map. I could join the combat immediately. So smart focus, I, I don't hate this. And you could adjust the size and the position I guess would work. I don't know why you need to ever not be in the center. I'm hitting the HDR button. Oh God, it's so bright. Well, for you it's so bright. Right, while those assholes are screaming. In fact, I can lower the volume. Oh, Jesus, shit. Matte screens! Let's talk about matte screens! Oh my lord. By the way, this is so dark for me and I'm sure it looks fine for you, but it's very dark for me. Because I know how to record a screen with a camera. I have to be looking at where the enemies are or it blows my mind. But at the same time. Everyone's dead. Everyone's gonna die. Like it just, it's easier to look at. Fucking. Alright. Let's shut that off. Menu. Down, down, right, down, down, right, right, down, down, okay, X. So now you've got this, I, I don't know, I kind of like it. Anything that makes me better at games, because I'm bad. They didn't send me these monitors so I could start kicking ass and getting even, get my K to D up, bro. We're down, oh, hello. Best part about Planet Side 2, Alt F4 works. Just it goes away. So yeah, smart focus is interesting. I'm sure there's you could probably find a, a third-party app that'll add that, you know, as an overlay, but it would probably come up as a cheat or some shit. And the fact that the monitor is doing it itself is sort of nice. Alright, last things. Both have matte screens. I fucking hate hate seeing myself in the screens. That, NEC, matte. This, shut up the power, matte. You see me? Is there a Zeus reflection thing going on? No, 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 no. Matte screens for the win. Um, 
Need names, not numbers. Yes, USB-C inputs, talked about it. AMA, advanced motion acceleration, which both of these have, and it does crank it from like a five millisecond response to a one millisecond response, and I tested it by just looking back and forth on a really close texture. And if I put it on, and there's two settings there, well, there's three settings, there's off, there's high, and then there's premium. Premium, like your cafe latte. And the premium does indeed, like it almost looks weird, like it's, it gets soft and, and blurry when you move, and then you go high, it's like, oh, it's starting to fix that, and then it's, it's sharp. So you get a lot less ghosting happening with AMA on. I already talked about auto brightness. That'll do auto brightness, but this will do auto brightness and color temperature automatically. And they're both free sync, and I have an NVIDIA G GPU. So, eh, eh. Let's pull this one down. Did I mention this is just a review about these screen bars? And, and it will be, ooh, that's nice. It will be staying, oh, Jesus! Sweet baby Jesus. No, no, no. Okay, go off. I'm blind. I'm fucking blind. That will be going on that monitor so that I can sit at my desk and at night I can just turn it on and it just lights up a perfect little beam. That's all I'm talking about in this review. The monitors are just extra fodder. Um, let's pull this off of its beautiful perch. Ugh. Oh, I'll say this. We'll talk about both of their powers. So, you gotta remember to upload that wallpaper. So you can get Sleepy Girl on Motorcycle and Sexy Legs Girl Crop 20 by 9. This one, with the nice adjustable stand, runs off a power brick, which is back here, which is um, hefty, to say the least. Here's the hefty power brick. What are you? How big? 20 volts, 6 amps. So, that's sort of a good thing. If you're using a monitor arm, which you'd have to buy an adapter because, as you can see, there is no uh, VESA mount for this. Uh, you only have to run, it's got a goddamn display port, so it's locked. Thanks, display port engineers. I needed this to be fucking difficult. Wow, am I really gonna have that harder? Anyway, you'd have to run just this up your monitor mount. I'll run it up your monitor mount. To release, do this. Mm. There we go. I think we got it. Wow. All right, add this to the bullet points. This is annoying and shitty, and I didn't take off the tape that says press here to release, so it's a little bit thicker than it should be. There we go. Whew. Anyway, so yeah, there's your little, your little locking display port. Where am I putting this to show it off? No, no, just turn it around on the desk. You got it, buddy. Oh. She's not super heavy, but she's awkward to wiggle around. I know a lot of people that go to lands, and when they bring something like this, they're always in their original box. That's why I said the original box of this is fucking massive. There was no possibility of keeping that box in my apartment. I was just like, I'm throwing this box away. Oh, here's the back cover, which has been off the monitor uh, since I unboxed it. Because I don't go back here, so therefore I don't care about this little cover. But you can just do this. And oh, look, at now it's complete. It is complete, I don't care. It takes us to throw the shit out. Zio saved that kind of guy. So no Vesta here, you have to I forgot how you do it. There's a, there's a, I definitely saw something to do with special ordering, like this. I think pops off. Uh, I'm not gonna do this because my friend's buying this for me, but I think this pops off this panel, and then you can unscrew this, and then screw in another thing that's just the four by four vest amount. Let's turn this on its head. Wow, oh, big monitors are big. <laughs> We've got, there's the power plug, which is very special, which is nice, so you don't plug in something fucking wrong. You've got a, I think that's a headphone out, is that out or in? Headphone out, woo, I wonder how that is, I should review it. Two HDMIs, you've got 
the full size display port and then you have a USB-C input which will act as an input for this monitor for the video and then it'll also act as a USB 3 uh, hub so you have two USB ports so you could plug your keyboard and mouse into this then all you need is a USB-C cable to whatever your computer or laptop you're running uh, here's a little Kensington lock yeah, and here are the buttons way too far back nice big power button at least it's illuminated but you can't see it so yeah this thing let's go and oh uh, you know what this feels so fucking heavy you're gonna come in here and you're gonna sit down like that booyah now let's go talk about the 32 for a couple seconds and then we'll be done with this and i can store these things oh hello samsung I've kind of missed you. Excuse you. Now, this much more traditional hookup, just a standard power plug. Wait, that's fucking display port. I gotta do the thing. Wow, the display port cable is thicker than the power plug. So, standard three prong. Let's flip you on. Yes, I'm gonna run it like this for a bit because I think running FUBAR on a vertical 4K would just make my head explode. Uh, this came in two parts. You can unscrew this here. So you get basically this L and then the foot. And it is tilt adjust, but right here are those uh, screws. Well, you had still need a screwdriver to just loosen them, but they go pop, pop, and they stay there. And this slides out. So that's how I would transport this. I would just detach this and put a handle on this. We got two HDMIs. Here's your display port. Here's your USB-C video input. Uh, and there's headphone out again, headphone out again. No USB hub in this. And then on this side is just the power plug. So that's it. And this feels much easier to wield. Even though they both claim to be nearly the same weight, I gotta imagine that that 35 inch just feels heavier. There's your VESA mounts, it says BenQ. Very little shiny plastic. Actually, the only shiny plastic is this. As you can fucking see. But yeah. Prices, 850 on that, 700 on this. If you're gaming, if you're only gaming, if you're gaming only hardcore, you gotta get the curved. You gotta get the curved one, you gotta take the curved one. It's just, it's, the curb helps. But if you're doing only 25% gaming and the rest is production or web browsing or music, I'm still a solid believer in the 16 by nine lifestyle. Especially if you're gonna go something like this. Again, 40 might be too much for most people, but not for Z. And then 21 by nine, you can't, this is a 29 inch it's too small 1080p 1440 you could deal with 1080 it's just it's just it's old tech you can't deal with it anymore so that is my review of the BenQs I like them both I really do for the fact that that has like a, a color loaded uh, what the 709 setting that's great I would still like to be able to tweak a little bit more so but other than color tweaking I enjoy the curved screen. I really did. I just, the vertical, I just, I miss the vertical more than I like the width since my normal monitor is that wide anyway and more resolution. Really the only, one of the benefits of having a curve that's 1440p is your video card has to work just like 45% less than that. 4K, it's gotta work harder. 1440p, 3400 width instead of 38. You're gaining, well, you're losing resolution, therefore you're gaining frames per second. That's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is, Jesus, that's a cool looking monitor. I just wish they'd fucking name it and not, you know, I don't remember the name again. I'm, just, I'm a professional reviewer, I don't remember the name of it. It's like the, the WQBX 3150BL cat toy anyway links to these in the description 
I'll link to the monitor arm that I use because uh, frankly, this thing makes everything worthwhile. Uh, some display port cables. It did not come with display port cables. The monitors only came with USB-C cables because they're probably the cheapest. So now I have a pair of USB-C to USB-C cables and nothing to use them on. This thing, you're, if you're going to buy anything from this review, it's going to be the, the screen light because it does its job. I love the job it does. Look, how, look at the fine line of just like, and you can adjust that line of light. It's what, I was happy with this BenQ, but thank you for the monitors. They will be used properly in the years to come. Well, at least one of them will. In the interim, I finally got these blocks back. I can put headphones on them again. Look at that fat monitor did to my babies. Shit. Okay. Links to the Patreon in the description in the upper right. Uh, links to everything you've seen and the wallpapers. And maybe one or two of those other pictures. I don't know. Maybe some nice 4K stuff to look at. But definitely those two that we set up. And uh, uh, I don't play Planetside often, but if, if you are on Planetside, uh, NC is the place to be while the servers are still up until they shut them down. So anyway, bye.